Um, yeah, as Rob was saying, uh, I'm the branch manager at Star Manchester. I uh, worked for the organisation, Star Refrigeration, for about six and a half years. Uh, I've always been in the industrial refrigeration sector, or most of my working life, and I did start off as an apprentice service engineer, so I, I'd like to think I'd bring a practical approach uh, to what we're going to talk about today. And probably one of the most used slides that we're going to talk about today is obviously the total cost of ownership of a plant, whether that's an industrial plant, some of these can be scaled down to a lower level. And I think the thing is, is what's quite interesting for the, the first three presentations, whether it's refrigerant choices, equipment selection, or how we use that heat, a lot of that is talking about, and a lot of that time is talking about this first section here, is how do we choose that capital? What do we choose? What specification? What I'm going to be talking about in, in general today is the aftercare, maintenance, service costs, breakdown, replacement components. But what I'm going to tell you today is by choosing this has a big effect on this, which is your energy cost, which is obviously a, a theme that uh, both, David, uh, both David's and Rob was talking about. So that's the total, total cost of ownership. And what we're looking at is a 20-year a cycle. So this is a t uh, what we would call a type A maintenance or an aftercare system. So this is what we would call a, a traditional maintenance system. So what have we got here? Well, we've got uh, reasonable reliability, efficiency okay, total operating costs, again energy costs, breakdowns and so forth, quite high. So what do we look at sort of slightly different? Well, we look at like what we would call a type B type aftercare system. And this is a condition-based maintenance system. And what we're doing here is by changing how we deliver aftercare to your refrigeration plants is we're increasing the reliability, increasing the efficiency, and therefore reducing your operating costs and all the benefits that come with that. So what will we say? Um, so that's the theory side. Let's see what we can do in practice. OK, so this was um, an installation. It was a main plant, quite a large ammonia plant running 24-7. Uh, uh, one of our traditional customers asked us to look after this plant. It wasn't a star installation. We, in, from the maintenance and service and operations department, we look after a multitude of equipment, whether that's a star design system or it's someone else's. So let's look at type A. This is the energy cost based on months usage with a traditional type ba uh, based maintenance system. So then we came on the scene uh, back in the January and what we found was, or what our customer found was, in the summer months here, June and July, when we do get a summer, that he was saving over £10,000 a month on energy costs. Now again, that is not a star design. And all we're doing here is that we're doing some very low cost adjustments as uh, Rob and Dave have said before, maybe recommissioning the plant, maybe looking at what the duties needed now compared with what it was doing or what it was designed for a number of years ago. Okay. So what do we say a type A system? Well, again, it's a traditional maintenance system, labour intensive, fixed schedule maintenance systems, and quite invasive. This sort of systems that we've seen in the in, in past. So let's compare that with a condition-based maintenance system. So we're going to talk about five elements this morning, five elements of what we would say is condition-based. Now the first element is what we're looking at is vibration monitoring. Now that can either be fixed installation or as in the picture here, it shows a little portable handheld device. And uh, I'm not going to talk about vibration monitoring too much because we've actually got a demonstration back so after your lunch if you uh, come and have a look at uh, how that system works as well and then we're looking at then performance checking how is the system performing today compared with how it was designed or how you're operating it and again that can be done in a number of ways uh, that can be a very traditional logging the plant someone taking that information back interrogating that and looking where the weaknesses are. In this instance, we're using um, uh, a piece of equipment called a climate checker. 
And again, I'm not going to talk too much about that system because we've got a little video to watch after my presentation which shows you how that sort of works. But also that can be pulling that information off site for us to monitor weekly. And we've got some graphs again at the, sh at the back of our data monitoring system. And we can see uh, where the performance falls off a plant and where we have to go and do some invasive work on some compressors and so forth. Laser alignment, again we've got laser alignment back at the back at the shop so we can have a look at that. And then the last two segments is uh, oil sample here and also refrigerant quality checks. This one is what we will call an ARQ which is ammonia refrigerant quality check. Okay. Sorry. I think my battery's going. Right. Moving on to oil. So again we've got some oil samples at the back here. We work on a rag system, red, amber, green, so anything that falls out of our tolerances. And what I would say is that, se uh, say, six and a half years ago when I came to start, we were already using this system. We work in partnership with a number of suppliers, which is a, a, you know, it's a laboratory in North Wales. Anybody can go and find that. That's not a problem. The problem is, is that they didn't know what we want as refrigeration engineers. So over the last six years, we've been working with them to work out these actual tolerances. So what does this system is? Well, this is quite an old system. Again, it's not one of our installations. It's a, it's, um, a process system. It's R22. So this has got a problem. What are they going to do in a few months' time? It's a, floody, uh, sorry, a fully flooded system. And this is working on a chemical process 24-7. So what do we see here? We see that here there's quite as an alert here because it's quite high iron content and on the same sample number four we've got free water we see the viscosity change uh, uh, this is running on a mineral based oil which is traditional uh, what we used to do but uh, we've moved away <coughs> from minerals minerals are quite susceptible um, to contamination and we see the viscosity now changing so we've got an alert on that still got a high water content and this thing here if you can see it says PQ that's basically a magnetic field particle quantifier so what we see is actually we've got small iron uh, particles probably below 200 microns and relatively large iron here so that's quite bad we took another sample and we're still getting some bad so, uh, samples here so then we've recommended the customer shuts the plant down, we do a full oil and filter change, which is a major undertaking on this plant. So everything's running fine, great. And we see in, in, in sample six, everything's running fine. But what happens in sample seven? We've got water back again. We've got debris, and we've got free water in the actual oil sample. Now, nobody's done anything to the plant. No, we've not taken anything apart, chopped a pipe, changed anything. So what's actually happened? Well, with this system, the actual customer controls the refrigeration plant. He stops and starts a machine. He controls the refrigerant levels in his surge drum. And what we actually found was, when we were not on site, is they had a problem with the control system. That caused a flood over of refrigerant to the compressor. The compressor stopped on its safeties, which is fine. But what did that do? Well, because it's a surge drum, all the dirt and water from the whole time that system's run is collected there. It's washed over back to the machine, and that's, sorry, and that's the reason why here we can see high water content here and free water there. So what we see in an oil sample is actually a controls problem. And we've recommended that customer changes its controls based on what we found here. Let's look at another oil, sam let's, another oil sample. Now, this is a star installation. This is a relatively new uh, system, circa 2010. And again, part of our maintenance uh, proposal and what we're providing to this customer is, is regular oil samples. But we've got a problem here. We keep getting oils, high oil insolubles here. Now, insolubles is just general muck in the system. On this level of oil analysis, what we do is we just, we just measure that figure. If we want to, we can take a further sample and we can actually look at a crystalline structure. And actually on here, we were, we were getting a crystalline structure uh, building up here. So again, we take another oil sample, it's still bad. So we recommend to the customer, we, we change his maintenance, we look at his five-year plan, 
and we, we, we have the equipment down and we do an oil and filter change. And here we go, everything's back to normal, everything's great. Then we do another oil sample, what happens again? Now again, nobody's done anything to this machine. We've not added new oil, we've not taken anything apart, but somehow it's generating a high insoluble. And what we found, and it took us a, a wee bit of time, what we actually found is on the third stage of oil separation, we have these coalescer f uh, filter arrangements here, we actually found, compared that with a new one, that this bonding had all melted. And they changed this bonding arrangement here, and that was the problem that we found. And we've got, again, a new coalescer there. You can actually see this. So again, what we're seeing with oil samples is actually some components are failing early because someone's changed the mix, or some things can be delayed. You don't have to do oil and filter changes every year just because your dad used to do it. <laughs> uh, but that's what it's like, you know, sometimes. Now we come to refrigerant quality checks. So around about 2009, 2010, um, we took a decision to do a national survey of ammonia systems throughout the UK. Now, I, I don't know if you know, there's nine branches, and that's really why we chose nine sites. Now, so what did we find? Well, we found that four systems had a water contamination of 1% or below, which is acceptable as long as you monitor that. We found one system had ammonia carbonate in. Now, the re that, what that is, is when you evaporate the refrigerant, you're left with this white powder wax that clogs up valves, clogs up heat exchangers, costs you a lot more to run, system breaks down, and you lose performance on the plant. And this was due to the guy had used, to save money, second-hand equipment. Someone had put that equipment in on an ammonia plant, but what they hadn't done is paid attention to changing the coalescers. So that was saturated with old oil on a synthetic refrigerant, that oil mixing with ammonia a trial, a, a turned into ammonia carbonate, and that was being pumped around the system. And that was, um, I think that took them about 18 months to clean the system. I think they got to the point where they actually stopped the plant, took everything out, pulled all the system out. But what we also found as well, we actually found that four systems were contaminated between one and a half to 24% water in the refrigeration system. So what does that cause you? Well, again, if we're just looking at one thing, we're looking at energy, for every 1% water in, a refrigera in an ammonia system, you're going to lose cooling capacity. You're going to lose one and a half to two percent. But also, coupled with that, is there's an increase in energy cost. So again, 1% water increases your running cost by 1%. But that's just one part of it. You're going to get component failure. You're going to get your oils breaking down very quickly. And what you find when you track oils is it just doesn't slowly deteriorate, especially these synthetic oils. Though they last longer, what they do is they fall off a cliff. So it, again, when you're doing oil samples, you've got to be doing them regular. Once a year is not enough. Once every six months is not enough. Really, if you've got to say, True condition monitoring, true condition monitoring on oil samples is once a month. That is not practical on some systems, and you have to take a view on that. But really, you've got to be looking at those sort of things anyway. So, what do we find? Well, we actually went to a, the worst system that we actually found, and uh, this was a traditional ammonia two-stage system. At, uh, in, in the food industry, had spiral freezers and he had a cold store. And he had two surge drums. So in this instance, we say surge room A and surge room B. Surge room A had a contamination of about 10 to 12 percent, and surge room B had a contamination of 20 to 24 percent water in his ammonia. So what did he find? Well, he took out 118 litres out of drum A and he took out over 500 litres of water. Now, if anybody knows a bit about refrigeration in the room, I'm not too sure where you know, we took out over half a tonne of water out of his ammonia plant. We took out that much water, he had to put more ammonia in because the system was running short. So what did the customer find? Well, he was monitoring a couple of things. He was actually monitoring the pumped 
liquid temperature, that's the temperature as it entered the spirals. He was also monitoring his cold store temperature and obviously he was monitoring his energy cost to a, de to a degree. So what happened? Well, after a period of time, we took that water out, uh, which in this instance I think took over six months, he noticed the temperature difference between the actual temperature of his uh, liquid temperature and the saturation reduced down. But also, and we didn't plan on this, but his cold store temperature came down. He only told us right at this point that he'd been having problems from a number of years maintaining his cold store temperature. But also he found his energy costs went down. Thank <laughs> you.